Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Iman and I'm the founder of Earth Warriors Pakistan. As you all know, today is Women's Day, a day to celebrate the achievements of women. Women are not less than men in any field, whether it be it engineering, medicine, space, or sustainability. Women all around the world are leading climate action campaigns and climate tech ventures. So today, I have gathered three amazing women on this panel. Let me introduce you to the panel. First of all, we have Nadia Al-Shamari, a 32-year-old climate activist. She grew up in Denmark, where sustainability was a natural part in her life, where everything from recycling and renewable energy from a country perspective was in focus. Throughout her six years in the UAE, she has missed more sustainable alternatives, which is why last year she started Hello and Goodbye, a pre-loved fashion store. Next, we have Armina Raza. Armina is a 14-year-old climate activist from Karachi, Pakistan. Armina is the head of the Earth Warriors Pakistan Karachi chapter, and she does paintings and stories for the planet. And last but not least, we have Rida Rashid. Rida is a young climate, uh, young climate activist based in Islamabad in Pakistan. She, have, she has represented Pakistan in various climate conferences, both locally and internationally. So also, as we're going to be talking, Armina is going to be doing a painting for the planet. Okay, so my first question to you all will be, um, can you please introduce yourselves? Um, so who would like to go first? Uh, Nadia, would you yeah. like to? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, as you said, I'm Nadia. I'm from Denmark. I've lived in the UAE for almost six years now. Um, being from Denmark, you know, sustainability, vintage, uh, sorting your trash, like these very basic things. We grew up with it. I grew up going to flea markets, um, having vintage stores right and left. And moving to the UAE, I kind of missed that. Um, it's sustainability and such when I came here six years ago it wasn't such a big part of it it is becoming now there's so many amazing initiatives but I missed the the flea market the vintage shops and such and I've been having this idea for a very long time um and then after COVID I was like I think the time is right I think the people in the UAE are going towards a more sustainability lifestyle and that's when I started hello and goodbye Wow, that really makes sense because the fashion industry, it really, really kind of plays a role in the, this. Absolutely, you know? yes. So, um, Armina, would you like to go next? Oh, yes. Um, as you said, I'm Armina from Pakistan and I'm 14 years old. And um, yeah, I've, uh, I started uh, the working towards the climate as like when I, when I like figured out that the climate needs help and in school we were also learning that uh, how damaged the climate is and it needs help so like I started doing that I started painting at the year, very young age too because it was a way to like express creativity and using the paintings you can like also tell your point of view on how to help the climate I usually paint about uh, the sceneries and nature and all that because I need to like give the point of view like how the climate needs help so well that is really nice thank you Armina so uh, Rida would you like to go next yeah definitely honestly first of all happy women's day to all the women watching and especially the ones present here and i'm literally so happy to see iman and Armina work towards climate justice at this young age um i'm 19 right now and i started climate activism when i was nine years old and i've had this very long journey um 
and I, I'm based in Islamabad, but I run two non-profit organizations, Impact Pakistan and Project Ab. And both organizations are basically working on adaptation projects across Pakistan in collaboration with the governments, um, the local groups and NGOs and the local people and basically the grassroots activities. And um, these organizations are basically, you know, the child projects to me because I've seen these two projects literally grow up and because I want to become a journalist when I uh, graduate from university hopefully uh, after four years I am starting Pakistan's first digital news platform uh, on 23rd March which is Pakistan day and also my birthday so it is a very special day to me and on that platform it would be a safe space for all of you the ones watching the ones present here to express their views for their research and their creativity i mean like you can you can post uh, your artwork you can post your research you can post your blogs over there and it would be one safe space where every information related to climate change in pakistan would be available and yes this is what my work has been like and i'm very excited to be part of this um conversation well thank you rida so okay so now how strongly do you think, on a scale from 1 to 10, how do you think that women can make a sustainable world? Nadia, would you like to go first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that women has a very, very strong position in this world. We are the backbone of the household. We quite often come up with these very creative ideas. Uh, I'm a part of a network in Abu Dhabi with women that have started their own businesses. And I tell you, these women, they make it all happen. It's sustainability, it's zero waste. And it's just, they're challenging the the norm, the norms of what we used to. We don't go and buy our soaps at the grocery stores. No, we go to a small shop where we support a woman, a local grown um, store owner and we buy non-toxic, non-chemical, non-plastic soaps or whatever household items. And I think these are the little changes that will actually change the world, that we buy more uh, locally grown, uh, locally sourced and support women this way. I completely agree, especially like in, uh, you know, Carrefour, it raises its weight so much tomatoes and etc so much fruit is wasted every day so like i totally agree with you because every small step it can make a big difference yeah so thank you nadia you're welcome so um armina um uh, if you'd like to go next yeah so i just believe that um women can like fully like on a scale of one to ten they can because like um Research like suggests that women have higher levels of socialization to care about others and be socially responsible, which then leads them to care about environmental problems and be willing to adopt environmental behaviors. So I think that's where like women can make a big difference on the climate. Thank you, Armina. Thank you. Uh Rida? Yeah, definitely. Um, so if I was to be asked if women can make a sustainable world, I think um, a thousand out of 10 because women can actually make a sustainable world. And we see how the system right now, till now, has been run by the men. And um, all the ruling elite is all men. And we barely see women in power. And we need women to make a sustainable world. So I strongly believe that women can play a critical role in creating a sustainable world. Women have actually been historically part of uh, primary caregivers and families and communities that are often most affected uh, by climate change. And I've seen this in my village as well, because um, I've seen my aunts and my grandmother uh, do all this, do do the activities of agriculture and the activities related to, you know, bringing water to the house. So they are the basic uh, primary caregivers and they do possess unique perspectives, uh, knowledge, skills and can actually contribute to a sustainable world. And so, yeah, obviously on a scale of one to ten, I would give them a thousand. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Rida, you also said uh, that you started uh, 
working for climate change when you were nine. So uh, a question to all of you would be that, how old were you guys when you started and when, when you thought that I want to do something for climate change and why? Do you want me to go ahead first? <laughs> well, if you'd like to. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, so I started when I was nine and it was because my village, uh, which is in South Punjab, was flooded and my village has been flooded for longer than I've been alive and that is the same case with Pakistan and most of the countries across the world and I've seen my village being flooded in 1988 then 2010 and then recently in 2022 as well so seeing my own family being affected by climate change and me living in Islamabad, which is the federal capital of Pakistan and having the privilege actually and being raised up in a family which had the privilege of living in such an amazing and beautiful city. I felt like I had to do something for the people, for, for my family back in my village. And that was when I started. And I started off actually with doing basic um, cloth drives. And I used to give clothes to the people in those villages and help them with all I could. And I remember, Nadia, I'll tell you this. So we have very bad currency. And the first uh, donation that I collected was 500 rupees. Um, and I gathered those 500 rupees in, I think, three to four months. And I, I used to go to school and ask, you know, my friends that I need donation. I have to help people. And I helped a few people with with that money and now i can i'm able to collect a lot of money for and help a lot of people so yes this is how i started and my message to all of the people who want to start is obviously that you can make a difference and your voice does matter and everything that you do does matter and it actually has an imp impact on the society and i've seen this throughout my career Thank you so much for that. It's actually really quite similar than how I started. So, uh, Armina or Nadia, would you like to go next? Yes, yeah, so I don't have like a starting age. I, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, I grew up with these initiatives. Like as long as I, I I'm born in the 90s, <laughs> a little bit before you ladies. Um, but as long as I remember, there were like multiple trash cans outside the house and it was just organic waste go in the green, plastic and metals go in the black bin. So so it's always been a natural part of my life. Um, and I think within the past decade, it's become so much more a conscious decision that you have to make. Oh, I want to make a climate change. But where, where I grew up, it was just there. Uh, we, we, we grew up with it. We grew up learning you do not litter when you walk through the forest. If you see anything, you grab it, you hold on to it until you come to a trash can. So I, I can't pinpoint an age. I've always loved the nature. I have a degree in, in outdoor life. Um, so the nature's always been a big part of my life. I want to protect it with all I can. I want to do like all these little things I'm, I'm actually hosting a uh, beach cleanup next Sunday with my business to make people aware that we need we really need to protect the earth we only have this one and we are so many people we can do like if everyone just does a little bit better I, I truly believe we can make some really amazing change um so <laughs> yeah not a not a specific age it's always been a part of my life Wow, from Denmark seems to, seems to be a really good country relating to climate change because um yeah. because it's a, like a part of your life. More countries really need to be like that. So um, Irina, uh, would you like to go now? Yeah. So for me, um, uh, my parents always like taught me that um how to like work towards the climate and like how much the climate needs help. And then in school. It, as we also learn about all the climate change and global warming and how badly it was affecting the environment and how the fossil fuels and stuff. So that's when like I was like, okay, so we need to do something about it. I and just I like can't also can't pinpoint an age at which I was like, okay, let's do it. But yeah, I've always like had like 
we need to work towards the climate kind of mindset because we like growing up in this um age we like really like see how much the climate needs help and how much we need to work towards it wow hearing all these stories it really has inspired me and i i'm the viewers also they must agree that wow Okay, so like the next question is, as a climate leader, what impact are you most proud of? Um, who would like to go first? I think I'll go first. <laughs> um, I think I'm obviously I would not I would never want to call myself a leader or, uh, of 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 the climate movement because i'm just a tiny part of this massive and big climate global climate movement and even in pakistan i'm just a tiny part of all the amazing people who contribute towards climate justice um one of the projects that i'm most proud proud of um is um the flood relief work that i did during the 2022 floods because it displaced 33 million people in our country right and uh a lot of women were affected and even my own family and our own crops were affected by by the massive floods that happened in 2022 and being able to help communities and being able to actually create an impact on their lives and do something to make their lives better it was one of the projects that i'm very proud of and honestly another project because i've always wanted to be a journalist and then the fact that i'm launching pakistan's first digital news climate platform um it it is also one of the projects which actually make me very happy and i'm very excited for the launch as well well i i'm also really excited i would love to check that out and for the flood relief campaign you did i am re- a really good job you did so uh, nadia Yes. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I, I launched my business just about a year ago. Um, because the UAE, we spend a lot of money here. We do, and um, we have the resources to do, to do better. And I, I saw that, goodness, people go out, they buy all of these clothes, they wear it two to three times, and then they discharge it. It's not even recycled. It's actually just thrown directly in the bin. Studies say that on average, women in the world, they wear their garment seven times before discharging it. Again, just in the garbage, not even recycled. And I thought, this this has to change. We cannot, this is not sustainable. It cannot last. So I'm trying to, I'm not trying to educate. I'm trying to inform people about how we can make the most of our wardrobes. I love fashion and I love sustainability and I was like I need to combine this and I know that there are women out there looking for this they there's so many women that when I meet them they say oh this idea is amazing I've been in the UAE for so many years and I've missed this so that's my teeny tiny contribution to trying to solve a very very big issue and if I can just impact one or two women I, I I could not be more happy. Um, and what we also do in Hello and Dubai is that with the with the earthquakes that were recently in Turkey and Syria, we said, okay, we're going to donate all profits uh, that we make for two weeks to this cause. And it it makes people want to donate their clothes that goes to a good cause. So I think sometimes people might just need a little bit of a push to do better like someone needs to say you can it's easy and you can do this very simple thing and people are like oh yes i i absolutely want to do help but one of the struggles in the uae i believe is that quite often people don't know where to go to do the right thing or to do or to help um so i think as a, as a woman living in the uae i have a very important task ahead to to guide people in the oh this is where where you can go and do a beach cleanup. This is how you, instead of buying water bottles, get a um, reusable reusable bottle. Like these kind of little things, um, I believe those are what's going to make the big change. Really, really, um, I totally agree with you because, like, you know, sometimes, like 
yeah i totally agree that sometimes people buy one thing and then throw it out i've seen this a lot in my own family so i also decided to do something about it so like I also put them that you can at least give them to charity. So there's like the Project Smile in the UAE. So mm-hmm. like a bit like that, there's like in Pakistan. So I agree that even something really, really small, it can make a big difference. So, uh, Armina, no. Yeah, so um, I'm proud to, let, uh, to be like a First of all, I'm like really proud to be a representative of Earth Warriors Pakistan and to represent my country and spreading awareness among my peers. I'm also really proud that um, I was able to use my creativity with writing and painting to also aware, uh, spread awareness about the climate change and global warming. If if only like it made, even if it made like a really small difference on the climate, it still did. And I'm really proud of that. Thank you, Amina. So, if you could say one thing to the world leaders today, what would it be? Uh, I, I, do you want me to go ahead? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, honestly, only if the world leaders could listen to us, I, I, I have so much to tell them and say to them, only if they heard. Um. One of the things that I want to say to the world leaders is that whenever you take a decision, you need to take into account the countries of the global south. And because the global south countries have unstable governments, right? And the decisions that we make internationally um, are not in line with, with the systems in the global south. And similarly in Pakistan as well. Um, so we need to take into account the accountability process, the transparency process, and how fast we need to make all all of this. Um, so I think this is one of my messages to the world leaders, only if they could listen, uh, that we need to take into account the fact that the global south nations have unstable governments. And when we decide something, um, we need to consider that. Yeah. Thank you, Rada. Uh, Amina, would you like to go now? So, uh, for me, I'm also like the world leaders. They won't listen, but like if I had a chance to like tell them, and if they did listen, I tell them to like help us save the planet, like help us work towards it, not like destroy it, like help us towards like climate change activities, like help us reduce the fossil fuels and greenhouse gases and stuff like that. Thank you, Armina. So, Nadia. Well, I agree a lot on what Armina just said. So, my issue um, here is we are told, and we as consumers, we are told you have to do better. You have to buy this bamboo tooth uh, toothbrush because you, as a consumer, you are creating the problems. When in reality, it's actually not us. It's the big companies. It's the world leaders. It's the very, very rich of the world. But it's always easier to say, you are the issue. You have to fix it. But we can't. Not without the support of the world leaders and actual support. Um, So I think think they need to start to look in, like in more. It's like, okay, it's not not, um, each consumer. No, it's big organizations, the big oil companies. It's the big chains and all of these. Like we go and we buy our sustainable products at the supermarket. And then we believe that we did a good thing. But we have to look at how did this product end up in the supermarket? It was produced in China. It it was pears picked in Argentina. Then they were shipped to China to be packed. And then they end up in a supermarket in in the States. And then we are told, oh, you have to buy better products. It's it's not us. I I believe it's it's way bigger than the the consumer itself. itself. So, th- yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nadia. So now my last question would be, uh, in a few words, what advice would you give to other young women who want to work for climate justice? Just a little short uh, message. I think my message to the women uh, out there is that um, uh, 
anything that you want to do for climate justice, you need to be persistent, you need to be collaborative, and you need to be informed because climate justice is a very complex issue and it requires collective action and diverse perspectives. So don't be afraid to speak up and use your voice to advocate for what you believe in. And remember that every action, no matter how small it is, it does make a difference. Thank you, Rida. So who would like to go next? Yeah, mm -hmm. I can go. Oh, sorry. Nadia, you can go. Um, I want to tell the older women of the world that we have power in our money. We, we do. We do in our voices as well. But at the end of the day, it comes down to where we put our money. Do we put it at, again, I work in fashion. So do we put it at Zara? That's a... a, a huge corporation where the women are underpaid or do we go and source out find where are the women actually paid a living wage we might pay a little bit more but we support women and I urge all people to make these decisions how do we make like how how, how do we um um how do we vote, vote with our money basically also buy second hand don't don't go and listen to the media when they say, oh, you have to go out and, and change everything in your household to baboo. No, that's absolutely wrong. You have to use what you have. So spend your money wisely. That's honestly the best advice I can give. Thank you, Nadia. So um, Amina? Can I go now? Yeah. Okay. okay. So um what I would like to say to like all the young women who are like trying to like make a difference to the climate is like take the first step. You should like if you think you're what you're doing is right, do it. Take the first step. People are gonna try and pull you down, they're gonna tell you what you're doing is wrong, but please don't listen to them. Work hard for what you believe in and just take the first step, no matter how small it is. If it's making a difference, you're doing a great deal for the climate. Yes, Armina, and I totally agree. So uh, I think that's all for today. Thank you all for joining us on this Women's Day. Uh, so now, for the big reveal. Armina, can you please show us your painting? I'm, yeah, sure. Can you give me a second, please? Of course, of course. Um, it seems like Armina has some technical issues. Uh, so thank you all for joining us again. I'm sure our viewers are greatly inspired by all of these wonderful stories. So I hope you thank all you so enjoy and I will see you all soon. Well, goodbye. Bye.